Peace Call Bill is a law proposed by Brunel Senator Ali Ndume. It seeks to give legal backing to the establishment of Peace Call as a government parastatal and allow its members to be absorbed into the proposed organization at commencement. Though President Mohamed Buhari had declined assent to the bill in 2018 over security concerns, it has begun to gain momentum once again following its reintroduction. On this episode of Top Talk, the National Commandant of the Peace Corps, Professor Dixon Ako, speaks on the mission to engage youth and fight insecurity through non-lateral means. All right, I'm as Dixon Ako. Welcome to Top Talk. Thank you, my pleasure. All right, um, let's start with um, the, an update on the Peace Corps of Nigeria. Uh, what is going on with the bill now, and uh, how has things been all the way to now? So far, so good. Um, three months ago, the bill was passed by the Senate for the second second time. That is to say, uh, the, the, the Senate, which is the upper assembly, is already done with the bill and it has been transmitted to the House of Representatives for concurrence. I think beforehand, before the Senate um, even entertained the bill, the bill was also pending before the House of Representatives, and it was at the level of uh, clause-by-clause consideration third reading, and that is where it is now. We are being assured that as soon as um, the budget defense is over, when the plenary resume, it will be taken. All right. Can you tell us about the issues that you know arose with the bill not passing the first time and then coming back, and then uh, what is the difference now exactly? And the issues that were raised before about funding, about um, uh, bureaucracy being brought in when the other security uh, paramilitary, paramilitary forces, so to speak, are uh, you know underfunded and are having issues, and that bringing in a new one would cause more. So how has that argument been resolved? Well, if you look at um, the proceeding in the Senate, especially when the lead debate was being taken by the sponsor of the bill, distinguished Senator Ali Ndume, the chairman of the Senate Committee in charge of uh, Army, he made it abundantly clear that the aspect, the gray areas that um, the Mr. President raised then, and uh, he just make a passive reference to security concern. Uh, the single senator Dume did inform the, uh, the chamber during the lead debate that those gray areas has already been taken care of. That is to say, aspect that is of concern to uh, the security agency, especially the Nigerian police, it has already been taken care of. And uh, you say whether it was passed or not, the bill was actually passed, transmitted to the president, mm -hmm. and the president cited security concern and paucity of fund. And actually, the year the bill was transmitted to Mr. President, that very month was when Nigeria was passing through recession. At least 2017, if you check your calendar very well, Nigeria was actually passing through recession then, and the Mr. President cited it. Nevertheless, I kept saying, for us to address the growing unemployment situation in the country that is also having negative impact on the security in Nigeria, you cannot divorce unemployment, poverty, lack of job well, from, from, uh, from, uh, from insecurity. Because some of these youth that don't that, that have been so frustrated from the labor market at the end, ended up either being exploited for one negative tendency or the other. And that is why no amount of money invested, your Sami, in setting up any organization that can adequately Qatar for the youth, employment-wise, no amount invested will amount to nothing. So I want to say that the issue of funding shouldn't be an issue as far as Peace Corps is concerned. We believe that now, if you look at the amended bill which has been passed by the Senate and is before the third reading in the House of Rep, even there are other objective functional that have been added that Peace Corps will even use his hand through his function to generate resources for government and from there, your Sami government can source the salary that will be used to take care of uh, the Peace Corps and its officers. My new, 
uh, the organization has all the needed structure, offices, nationwide now. There is no state you go to that you don't find our office like this in such a state. And 80% of the numbers of local government in Nigeria, we already have our local government offices. So it's an organization, it's not as if you are giving a bed to, uh, uh, to an unknown organization, but this is an organization that have built a reputation for itself over the years, have offices here, have office, DEX office with the United Nations headquarters in New York, have DEX office with UN regional office in Austria, has office, uh, DEX office with UN, uh, UN regional office in, uh, in Switzerland, that is in Geneva. Uh, sorry to cut in, how has this been achievable without government assistance? Well, every non governmental organization that know, know its what, you understand me, know that uh, process of funding is self funding. Are you mean of generating income is self funding? Uh, the constitution of the peace corps make it explicitly very, very clear where we should source funds from. Our annual, uh, annual fund where our camping program, our membership drive, and the annual dues being paid by our members. It is the judicious use of these resources that have translated to whatever structure we have on ground today, but not any resources that come from government. So if as an independent organization, as a non-governmental organization, we can prudently manage whatever we are, we are generating to run the country, sponsor our pro members, for foreign program, United Nations program in different countries, Brazil, Switzerland, Austria, America, uh, Kenya, then you should know that when it is given recognition, formal statutory backing by the federal government, will money whatever that is coming. Why it will be very, my budget for Peace Corps will be very minimal is that it is not, a, it's not going to be an arm bearing organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as it's not an arm bearing organization, ours, our contribution through security, neighborhood watch, your assignment is to gather intelligence from the neighborhood and transmit to the conventional security agencies. We borrowed lately from the American Peace Corps, whose bill was signed in 1961 by the then American president, your assignment. Till today, they are prosecuting their objective, pursuing their core mandate without carrying on and they have achieved a whole lot. So I don't subscribe to any organization that is established who ended up bearing harm. You understand me? The conventional security organization can be used as a cover. And with us sourcing gathering intelligent data from local community and from the neighborhood, it will make their task easier. Yeah, but would this have significant effects in reducing insecurity? Because we have um, state governors, mm -hmm. Uh, to mention a few, we have um, uh, Governor Akre Dulu of mm -hmm. Ondo State, you know, advocating that states should be able to arm or have armed um, a police, basically state police in a manner of speaking. Mm -hmm. And that is their own way of saying that that will reduce insecurity. Now, bringing in the Peace Corps of Nigeria, if they're not going to bear arms and they're not going to really enforce uh, the law, would it as it, would it drop um, that level of insecurity by any means? Because the, the conventional uh, police force, the numbers will still remain as it is. So uh, how, how really would this impact on uh, insecurity? Well, a security component has nothing to do exclusively with enforcement or arm carrying, mm. arm bearing. Um, gathering intelligent data alone, that is why we have the challenges today. People believe that until you use some to approach issues security-wise, that is only when you can get any positive result. But me, I tend to disagree. Mm. If I have said it most often that, look, the amount being invested on the security in buying arm, buying heavy weapon to fight in security today, if it is invested in setting up uh, uh, companies, industries, that this youth will be engaged. Security, security will be reduced. And again, if Peace Corps, through its uh, initiative or, or, or core mandate, was able to engage significant numbers of our, of our graduate unemployed youth and they are engaged in one way or the other, it's also a, by means, it's also a way of re reducing unemployment. If the Peace Corps can use its pen and paper through vigilance, gather primary intelligence 
transmit to the security agencies, even as you came here now from the Brazil model, that every see you see Peace Corps officers wear dress, two on uniform or three on uniform, three on, on or two on civil dress with communication gadgets. Are you mean with security gadgets in terms of uh, what they can use to demobilize, not arm? Are you mean? And they will be able to tell the government or the security agencies there is a strange movement within this neighborhood. And every street you turn to, they will it constantly that report will be going on. So when crime is committed, you understand me, you don't need to start tracing. You understand me, the person to the destination, but by that gathering intelligence data and feeding security agency, it has worked in Brazil. I was privileged to be in Brazil in 2011 during what we call Air Summit. And I saw the model of security operation. And if you go even to America, vertically every seat, you see policemen. You understand me, wear dress, wear arm. You understand, their waist wear loaded with communication that even if you see them alone, you will be scared of committing the crime along that street. So that is psychological in terms of security operation. So when you talk about the security agency being, being set up by the states, Recently, there was a warning by the National, National Security Council, yes. we will not allow you to buy your semi-automatic weapon. The implication of allowing every state, we know what the governors are already doing. Politic, politi in, the, in, in, uh, in, in the field of politi in the politically, politi in terms of politics, you know what they are doing. Election that is conducted for local government by, uh, in any state, because the governors are the ones that set up uh, the, you know, some set up the BSA, that set up the State Electoral Commission, whatever, which, whichever party they belong to, so eventually win all the election. And the, some of these states, even when there are senior president that are high profile politician from that state, they will tell us that those politicians cannot even produce a counselor from their ward. That is how the security, if they are given that opportunity, that is how they are going to use the security to operate. I have been a victim because I have contested for elections before, and I know what the state government that was in power then used the, uh, the, 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 the state electoral commission to even the security, the conventional security of them to torment us. So if you allow them to have the full power and they have the privilege of setting up the, uh, their, uh, their own security agency fully armed with automatic weapon, honestly, it will complicate the current security situation. Why? Why you have all this insecurity escalating? It's the proliferation of arm to every, every uh, of arm light weapon to everybody's hand. Most people have access because of the conflicts in the Sahel region and also the kind of conflict we are now having in this West Africa sub region is affecting your family the security because arm is going into some the, the people that ought not to bear arm, they are now having access to the arm. And that is why we have. Even I don't also subscribe that if we are doing this thing in good faith, it shouldn't be. It's just like Peace Corps during the public hearing where a proposal was made by the Committee on Interior in the House of Rep to equip Peace Corps with, with arm. And I oppose it. So we mustn't bear arm and the, the proliferation to every group set up by state government should be allowed to bear uh, automatic weapon. It will endanger the security of this country furthermore. All right. Uh, so we'll talk more about um, the elections and how the Peace Corps can be involved. But before then, uh, what really is the difference when that bill is passed? What, is, what are the limitations the Peace Corps currently has that it won't have after uh, the bill is passed um, by the president? The limitation is certainly found in the aspect of funding and also interference by some government agencies. When the bill is passed by Mr. President, it will give statutory backing. That means the organization has transformed from a, a non-governmental organization to a government agency. And by and large, that will re 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 resolve the issue of uh, security interference into our program. Like I was saying, um, most of the things we are doing now are self-funding in line with the latest and spirit of our constitution, the sources of funding. Article 23 of our Constitution, which is approved by the Corporate Affairs Commission. Now, the government also accord of recognition, but we still have some de degree of district interference, which we know.
For example, recently we were invited to participate on the, uh, during the Independence Anniversary Parade in one of the states in the Southwest. The SSS stopped Peace Corps from participating, despite the fact that there are avalanches or avalanche of judgment, including Zoom judgment delivered by Court of Appeal that restrain them from doing so. So, enjoying statutory existence will stop all this thing from happening, and it will also enhance our activity, give more added, uh, there will be an added value to our activity because government will not take the responsibility of funding. And once government is funding, you should expect that Peace Corps will give more in terms of service delivery to the nation. All right, so now let's talk about elections. Elections are coming soon, but let's um, envision a time that the Peace Corps has, um, you know, become a government body. How would it, um, you know, uh, fit into the electoral uh, cycle? What would be the duties there? Well, if you look at part of the number six of the function of the Peace Corps, is to set up a, res a reservoir of well trained of trained manpower of a gra graduate of recruits. That reservoir, which we call the volunteer wings, you understand me, will always be exploited or be used by the government, especially when we have general elections. You describe that peace corps they have been trained. Apart from arm bearing, we the, uh, the science and technical weapon bearing, we, uh, weapon bearing mm. they have been trained in terms of martial art that look at any moment they can defend themselves. So, some of if the, if the larger society is secured, you understand me, peace corps can be used by the INEC, you understand me, to prosecute the election because you cannot easily, you cannot just easily go and, and task intimidating them. You understand me, you're wanting to subdue them for, for you to have your way. It won't be possible. So the bill also already provided that during election, during censor, during immunization, you can just go to Peace Corps and draw your manpower. So it's also there. And if you talk about the role we can play during election, mind you, most of our cardinal objective is, is uh, peace building. You know, some uh, 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 using uh, the capacity of our youths, you know, some to be able to preach peace, to be able to uh, mediate in conflict situation. And again, if uh, the petrol Peace Corps platform, if the, the vast majority of Nigerians are sensitized on how to go about the election peacefully, you are saying, I think uh, it will have value to a peaceful election, to the conduct of a very transparent and peaceful election. Then one of the functions of, of the Peace Corps that will be very, very effective, you are me, is the aspect that, that talk about educating members of every community on the security situation and safety measure that is peculiar to them. One, the people are properly educated because there is no government agency that is saddled with that responsibility for now. That is one of the number two functions, if you look at the bill approved by the National Assembly of the Peace Corps. Um, if we have Peace Corps going to, to a neighboring community and sensitizing and educating them, on the security and safety measure peculiar to them, the people will become very conscious and they will be alert, you understand me, to whatever that will be coming to distort security within their neighborhood. All right, that's fair enough. But I'd like to uh, speak on some of your recent comments on the election and how leaders should be held accountable. Now, uh, the organization is youth-focused. In terms of political participation, is there an avenue for that? Um, we know that one of the biggest issues youths face is uh, in terms of funds. Mm -hmm. We know there's the not too young to run bill, but at the end of the day, people say there's, a not, too, there's not a not too rich to run bill. And then we have youths having to have godfathers before they can go further uh, in the political cycle. So what exactly do you think uh, can help youths in that aspect to actually be able to participate and win elections? Well, uh, for as far as I'm concerned, the not too young to run act that was signed, you understand me? It's just a carrot that was dangled before the youth. Mm. <laughs> it does not translate to not too young to govern. Mm. Because what we are witnessing in Nigeria today is the circulation and recirculation of the elites. If there is no bill prescribing, prescribing that look, when you have done governor, go and rest. 
when you have found the social computer and you have let the younger one take over from there, then you continue to witness the kind of circulation and recirculation of the uh, list within the corridor of power. You can imagine that um, be, uh, uh, Obama being Clinton, go and Google, find out, investigate the age which the quakes the most prestigious offices in the world. That is the White House. They were less than uh, 56. You understand me? And if, if in Nigeria we have people about the age of 60 leaving governor and now going back saying they want to become Senate, you understand me? You govern three states, you govern three senatorial districts, three senators under you, and you are leaving. You understand me? Only for you now to now want to reduce yourself to become a senator, to heading one of the, you understand me, to be a senator in charge of one of the senatorial districts. That is the trend now that have denied the young people from having access to power. So what I will say is that even when the, the, the younger citizens they have the capacity to lead, you understand me, but they lack the financial way with that because I can say the amount involved. I contested for local government chairman because, because as peace call for now, it's an NGO. You understand me? And uh, it's apolitical, but that does not stop individual members of the, of, of the organization from exercising their fr franchise. Whatever political party they belong to, they are free to go and contest, and we do encourage them to also stake out their head in terms of contesting for elected position. You understand me? So that does not bad, but longer you are going there, you drop immediately away, you are no longer with the Peace Corps. So we have a basic rule that you must follow in contesting. So the enabling environment, you understand me, is not always there. Despite the not too young to roll, where with some of these younger people, a young graduate get up to 50 million for to go and pick up the form of for, to contest for a governor of a political party. Where will they get 20 million to pick up the form of House of Rep? Where will they pick up this? Thing? So that not too young to run beer still need to be looked into and amended because if any young person that want to get there is any waiver for them that they can pick from and contest, honestly there will be greater political participation in terms of aspiring for political offices by the younger generation. Uh, that's fair enough. Um, let, let's talk about um, an election that I held recently, the equity election before the Ocean elections. Um, during that um, election there were videos that um, came out with some young persons, youths, flaunting uh, cash that they received for their votes. And, you know, uh, we know there's currently some level of increase in um, interest, uh, also in that too. There's interest in politics now by young people. So a lot of other young persons, seeing those young people, were a bit discouraged to see that, you know, even though we're trying to be involved, money can still sway them. In that respect, how do you think that can be curbed? Um, vote buying, especially when youths are targeted. And on the other side, the use of youths during elections for violence and all that. Those two issues that affect youths directly, uh, vote buying and violence, how can those things be curbed? Well, we need a platform for our youth to be engaged. Mm. For officers over 187,000 officers and of Peace Corps of Nigeria, since they come, go to work every day, despite the fact that they are being paid pain, you know, one graduate who have master degree owner year, mm -hmm. that are earning just 60,000, 40, 55,000, because as an NGO, your son will also encourage them to do any other side business that will complement what or women, whatever they are any year. If the youth are left on their own, your son may know where to earn a living. You should know the same people who impoverished them, the same people who left them, your Sami, unemployed through, through deliberate policies, your Sami, will continue to exploit them. That is why we kept uh, sensitizing this youth and uh, 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 urging them to ignore the antics of this egocentric politician. Now, the, through, the, uh, through the effort of the National Assembly, the, I, the INEC, is improving, has improved significantly in election management, especially transmitting, collating and transmitting of a, a result. So the only thing left for the politician now is to embark on vote buying. If somebody who is engaged, somebody who is any salary, 
and your son be a graduate with any salary and have something to do, cannot go just go and wish away, just is right to vote for a credible leader. So it's because they are not employed, it's because the poverty is ravaging the land, it's because these youths, the politicians who go to buy this will know that look, they deliberately impoverish these youths through their two conscious and deliberate policies for this youth not to uh, not to be um, engaged. You understand me? And because they are not engaged, because of the high level of poverty, they dangle this money before them. And some of these people, because they feel that they either collect or they see nothing, I think that is what is res responsible. My joy now is that even the INEC, they just came up recently, less than a month ago, that look, they are sending special agents to various polling units now, not using the conventional security agencies, because the moment you are wearing uniform, they devise other means. So the INEC themselves now say the only way out now is to spend special agent like spy that will be monitoring the, the polling if that is done it will reduce the issue of vote buying and again our also youth need to be properly enlightened i've said it time and again we need the partnership of national orientation agency we have the structure we have the membership to be able to drum your family go to all over the federation to sensitize the youth that the best way to go about the election for us to produce credible leadership is not to not not to not not to resort into vote selling. You understand me? But they should truly come out, support the democratic the, the, the democratic processes by voting for credible leadership and sensitizing them on why they should disallow themselves from being used to perpetrate any uncanny acts, including thuggery and eventually any other form of electoral violence during general election or during election. All right, uh, one more issue now that affects youths and um, students who are also youths, the issue of the um, ASU strike and all that. Uh, it has been called off now, but we're hearing lecturers say that they still need to be paid for the eight months. Some of them say they don't have transport fare to go back to, the, you know, to work. Uh, how do you think um, such issues at the end of the day impact on youths? And uh, what do you think could be uh, the possible solution? And also, do you think it will have any effect on the elections? Well, thank God the strike has been called up. And also, I want to also appreciate the, the disposition of the federal government that came out for the first time we are seeing government coming out to say, I apologize. To the student, we apologize to the ASU. And now the ASU have resumed we can now kickstart from there the process of discussion so that this will not happen again. Let me tell you, education is the best drug for any genuine development in any nation. If you deny the youth that, that privilege, it will spare doom for the nation. So I will advocate that, look, this incessant strike by ASO and any other uh, the education uh, by any other workers in any level of education should be addressed once and for all. We should place high premium on our education because the implication, if you look at the period this youth were at home, they can easily be mobilized, you understand me, by any forces, whether for action that will be detrimental to the security of the nation or whatsoever. So it has significant implication in the life of students, youths that have programmed that in the, that this year, even two months ago or three months ago, they would have graduated now to be going back again. Your son need to cut you to start all over your son that semester is not welcome in any ideal uh, system. So, we must have to put measures in place. The government have to put measures in place that they address this issue once and for all. And again, there is no amount of resources being invested in the education of our young person that amount to waste. That is to say, no matter what ASU is, is, is journey for, we have traveled widely. We see university environment. Ours is just like uh, a desolate uh, a, a community compared to education environment, a higher institution. If we have been to Maryland, have organized an award ceremony in University of Maryland. Before if you go to their to to one of their campus, it's like it's like Sheraton or it's like a Transcorp. So government that uh, they say traveling is part of education. 
if our education, if our elites, political elites, if our leaders travel outside, so that some of their children go to this overseas to school and they go to the environment, they should try and replicate it. So when people tend to blame, blame us so politically, I tend to disagree because I've been privileged to have gone to three treasury institutions. You are signed for one program or the other in abroad, and I'll see how the, stu the student community or the school community look like. Government should do the needful so that they will address once and for all, and generation yet unborn will continue to celebrate and appreciate them. So, since education is the foundation of any national development, the bedrock, let us give our youth the best of it. All right, thank you very much uh, for that, um, for your thoughts on youth issues, and uh, we hope to talk to you soon on the update of the bill. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you.